नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टी इज लाइफ फोन एंड इंटरक्टिव वेबिनार टूडे इज द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ दिस फाइव डे ट्रेनिंग एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस डिस्कशन वुड बी गेम बेस्ड लर्निंग पॉलिसी परस्पेक्टिव नीड एंड स्कोप सो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अ लॉट अबाउट गेम बेस्ड लर्निंग If you have any questions, any queries, please feel free to reach out to us and share your questions. You can share your questions through our YouTube channel, which is N C E R T Official. In the live chat box, write down your questions, and our experts they'll be more than happy to take all of them till five o'clock. If you want to call us, the number is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. And if you want to email us, the email ID would be training dot help desk at the rate cit dot nic dot in. You're watching us live on PM E with their channel number six to channel number twelve, and this is a panel discussion. So we have experts in our studio, and we have experts online as well. So let me introduce you to our first guest, and he is Professor Amrinder P. Behra. Welcome, sir. Namaskar. Sir needs no introduction. He is the Joint Director of CIET and CIT, and we have with us Professor R C Sharma. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Namaste. Thank you so much. Namaskar, sir. Sir is the Director of H R D C Ambedkar University, New Delhi, and we also have in our studio Professor Indu Kumar. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Tanvi. Namaskar. Namaskar. So, ma'am is from Department of I C T and Training, CIET and CIT. so our guests are going to talk a lot about uh, game based learning how are they important its need its uh, now why is it necessary and uh, a lot of comparisons would be done so let's begin this discussion and uh, my first question would be to professor behra sir so what does uh, the nep 2020 recommend for game based learning uh, thank you very much uh, ms tanvi and uh, first of all i uh, welcome all the viewers who are watching us live on game based uh, particularly learning uh, and uh, also i welcome professor rc sharma who is the director uh, hrdc ambedkar university delhi and the former director uh, simka commonwealth of learning and my colleague professor indu kumar uh, to this panel discussion so uh, thank you very much once again for joining this panel as all of us we know that the national education policy 2020 has given a lot of stress on uh, student learning and also providing equitable quality education and lifelong learning for all uh, while talking about uh, all this the um, nep 2020 has a vision that use and integration of technology uh, should be done for teaching learning assessment even for bridging the language barrier across the country because we have more than 1700 languages in our country even for teacher preparation uh, this uh, technology needs to be used and also the assistive technologies needs to be used for the bank not only that uh, in educational administration management also we need to use technology but while coming uh, to the educational games digital games Uh, and uh, uh, using it as a learning strategy the policy while talking about curriculum it talks about an engaging curriculum and enjoyable curriculum for the child rather than burdening the child uh, um, with the curriculum so in that particular case i must uh, uh, mention before all of you that the policy talks about mathematical and computational thinking and it should be uh, done uh, starting from the foundational level itself while talking about mathematical thinking and uh, also computational thinking so uh, there are logics there and uh, the puzzles particularly and the games uh, both the digital physical and digital uh, if we say physical and digital mix so uh, needs to be used so that the children learn in a better manner all of us we know that from our child childhood whenever we get uh, any opportunity to a game situation we learn faster uh, because uh, while learning through games we use all our senses 
it is not only eyes not only uh, ear but also we touch them feel them and uh, track them even we gain points also through that so a competitive uh, mode also come with the peer so we learn similarly many of our children due to covid pandemic situation also and the teachers also using the digital modes also and all of us we know that the even children they do lo a lot of car racing even they play with many other animals birds uh, so um, so many thing uh, so through uh, various puzzles and uh, in that particular case the policy also highlights on uh, having individual attention to the learner in a way nowadays we are talking about personalized adaptive learning so if game based situations are created for children so for their personalized adaptive learning we can track their learning we can give feedback and we can give remedials also and we can see that okay they achieve a comparable quality of education at all level if i take you through the next slide again the policy talks about having digital repositories uh, of e contents and e courses and again it talks about learning games and simulations also even augmented reality virtual reality and virtual labs and through that learning also the policy highlights even the policy talks about use of disruptive technologies like artificial intelligence robotics iot uh, even machine learning also it talks about uh, so that from registry to certification to credit transfer we track the child and provide uh, such learning environment to the child which is entertaining enjoyable and engaging for the child so in a way directly or indirectly uh, the uh, policy while talking about achieving 21st century skills including cooperation collaboration critical thinking creative thinking and problem solving it talks about use of uh, programming and coding also from class 6 uh, onwards so that the children they when they come to the higher classes they become good coders and programmers and they become co creator of games digital games and puzzles rather than they are only just learners so the policy highlights that all teachers students uh, and all they need to be co creator of these resources so that they create and learn and they uh, learn up to a comparable quality and uh, uh, learn for the whole life and learn um, in such a way that it is enduring also they never forget so because games provides us various skills uh, to learn so uh, with these words i thank all of you for the opportunity and over to tanvi for the brief introduction and uh, how does uh, nep 2020 recommend uh, game based learning so let's go further and understand what exactly is game based learning from indu ma'am and uh, we would also like to ask her that uh, what is gamification what is gamified learning are these two the same things what is the difference what are the similarities so over to you ma'am yes uh, so uh, when it comes to uh, game based learning so we hear about uh, two terms uh, game based learning gbl and uh, gamified learning so there is a slight different in these uh, two terms when we uh, when we talk about game based learning gbl it is about using specific educational game to achieve a particular learning outcome in a, a game like situation by playing the game learner tend to achieve the learning goal or the learning outcome when it comes to gamified learning it is about introducing elements of games to a known game environment like classroom or education is not a a uh, gamified uh, uh, environment it's a non game situation but we introduce the elements of game in that non game situation there are other non game situations also where gamification is uh, used so if we uh, go on to this slide so we can uh, you know, focus on the uh, point uh, so these points are for gbl game based uh, learning any game uh, played using an electronic device either online or stand alone so we can talk about like children play uh, using uh, mobile uh, they also uh, use uh, uh, 
uh, laptop, desktop and other devices to play a game. So when it comes to game based learning, so it is uh, and uh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, it is a device mediated uh, situation where we use a specific device or uh, this game can also be uh, online or standalone. Then the result of the interaction builds an interactive and engaging environment and learners tend to get engaged with the content to achieve specific learning outcome. Then digital game provide a virtual environment where students are not limited to physical spaces like in the classroom we learn in physical spaces but when it comes to game based learning so we go beyond physical spaces we are in an virtual environment and we have those uh, hands on learning uh, there in the uh, virtual environment and not in the physical environment where we are not dealing with physical material, physical game based material, but we are dealing with digital material, digital gaming, game based content. Uh, so uh, then uh, it is an uh, instructional method, game based learning, as the very name suggests, it's an methodology, instructional method that incorporates educational content or learning principle into uh, digital games by engaging learners, so game based environment by engaging learners. Then game based learning describes an approach to teaching where students approach, uh, where students explore relevant aspects of game in a learning context and uh, mostly these contexts are thought of and designed by the uh, teachers sometimes students can also uh, they can collaborate uh, collab in a co collaborative manner teacher and students can create uh, such games then teacher and student they collaborate I have already mentioned this point and then uh, these uh, these uh, such created games and activities aid to students uh, learning experiences then uh, uh, Good game based learning applications can draw us into virtual environment that look and feel familiar and uh, relevant. It is not something uh, which is not familiar to student but uh, an element of game uh, is added to it. So here in this slide you can uh, have or we can have a comparison between gamification and game based learning there is minor slight difference but when it comes to uh, achieving the objectives goals of learning so both are uh, important but it depends in which situation gamification is important and where game based learning is important so uh, adding game uh, component to the course is gamification like there is some course so to, we add a gaming component to the entire uh, course where uh, we add game based learning uh, when I come to third point I will elaborate this point in detail then game based learning uh, facilitates uh, meeting desired learning outcome as I already mentioned then introducing game mechanism to a non game setting to encourage engagement so this point is also uh, has uh, also been covered by uh, me so classroom or school is not a, a classroom i may say so we play game during our uh, game period during uh, recess and breaks but to achieve a learning outcome when we are adding elements of games to encourage engagement is what uh, we call gamification then learning uh, is the result of playing the game when it comes to game based learning learning is the result of playing the game we get instant uh, feedback there about a particular learning situation content context or uh, the desired uh, learning goal then includes uh, gamification includes uh, includes uh, extrinsic rewards such as badges and awards. 
So this is very, very specific uh, to uh, gamification. So uh, it also facilitates adding uh, uh, grades uh, to it, like uh, adding uh, grading to the uh, gamified environment. So uh, then uh, badges are also given. So when it is, badges is a kind of digital artifact or uh, image. When a child uh, uh, completes a specific uh, task in a gamified environment, a badge is given, which is in the form of a digital artifact or image. Then leadboard is also one of the important element of gamified learning, where uh, the uh, uh, the students, uh, the roster of students are uh, created, displayed uh, digitally in order based on the number of points. So how many points a particular uh, student achieves, the roster is based on uh, that. Then uh, the labels, it has also labels. When a student complete a particular label, then he reaches to another label. That is also one of the uh, game element which is added to the gamified learning environment. Then locks. So there are locks also until and unless and students achieve a specific uh, percentage of uh, points, uh, specific some specific points, the next assignment or the next uh, content is not opened to a particular student. So that ensured completion of task which is given there so that student get uh, gets encouraged to complete the task and uh, move on to the another level. So these are the gaming element which are added to the non-gaming environment. But when it comes to game based learning, it can be achieved using customized or off the shelf games. So we can customize any content for uh, creating a game uh, which are not uh, games which are already uh, created or uh, borrowed from the taken from the uh, market in CDs, DVDs, but they are customized the, uh, by the teachers. Then uh, gamified gamification uh, can be flexible as per user requirement as in choice of time, pace and environment. So it is uh, a bit flexible. So when students uh, find time to reach on to the next level or complete the previous task, he or she can uh, just complete the task on his or her own pace. But in game-based learning, it can be accomplished with tactile or digital games. So there and then they receive feedback and complete the task. So it's always, uh, gamification is always for choice, it is, it is not always le linear learning path, but when it comes to uh, game-based learning, it could include simulations to allow learners to experience the uh, learning. So simulation, what do uh, we mean by simulation? It is uh, creating some abstract situation in near to uh, as a near to real experience so that is about gamification and game based uh, learning so over to tanvi okay thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, so now we have understood that in game based learning only you the person who is playing is real otherwise everything be the environment be the characters everything is virtual so um, these, this is the game based learning and we have also understood what is the difference between these two gamification and game based learning. So let's go further and uh, let's ask uh, Professor Sharma here. So, um, so would you like to enlighten us that how the game based learning market on global scale is emerging and also what the game uh, designers they are made to focus upon to make the game based learning effective for teaching learning. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Vivi. And let me share my screen first, please. Yes. I hope you can see it in uh, full. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, 
At the outset, I would like to thank uh, Professor Vera and uh, Professor Indu Kumar for uh, <laughs> you know uh, allowing me to interact with all of you. Uh, in fact, uh, the game-based learning it has uh, not been a new phenomenon. Long back, if you remember the uh, program, the logic for automated teaching operations, which was in the early 1960s, somewhere around now 62 years ago. Uh, it, it was devised uh, for uh, uh, run, I mean, provide education through computers. But this digital game-based learning was more popularized by two people. One is Mr. G and uh, then uh, Prensky uh, in 2001 uh, for his book. In fact, he has been the uh, person who has given so many terms to us uh, like uh, uh, generation Z and those kind of things. Uh, in terms of the global market for game-based learning, what has made the difference is that the immersive technologies, for example, augmented reality uh, in which NCRT is already doing wonderful work, uh, uh, they already have created uh, you know, text-based, AR-based, uh, those books also, and virtual reality experiments. These have positively impacted the education industry by enhancing learning efficiency and improving the engagement and the knowledge retention levels in the faculty, in the employers, in the students, everywhere. There are various market players also. For example, there is Game Learn, then Hurix Digital, etc. They are integrating innovative technologies in their game-based learning modules and aiding learners in better understanding and uh, gaining uh, insights about the subjects with interactive experiences. So this is there. And these technologies, they are integrated into the courses that include real-world based storylines and evaluations, uh, allowing the students to effectively understand different topics. The advantage is that they have high retention value. Now, if we see the situation in India, as Professor Dara and uh, Professor Indu Kumar has already uh, uh, you know, linked it with national education policy and the pedagogy of uh, learning, in India also, the demand for game-based learning from the corporate sector as well as academic sector, it is, uh, uh, you know, it is uh, increasing. And we believe that by the next five years, uh, it will be, uh, the usage will be very much high. And interactive learning and development of the courses will be a major force behind these things. So, the subject matter experts and large enterprises, they are migrating to digital training platforms, new learning management systems, new platforms, they are being uh, created from their existing traditional training methodologies. For example, the routine kind of workshops or conferences uh, or something like that. And uh, uh, this is a study by uh, Steller and Schwarm. They provided a framework for categorizing the different games. They divided that uh, the games can be digital or non-digital. They can be categorized on the basis of their purpose. Means, is it entertainment, it is education, it is business, it is training, is it strategy, it is defense, it is health related to something general, the subject disciplines based, and on the basis of platform also. Nowadays, everybody is talking, we, you know, cryptocurrency uh, it is taking, so blockchain is there. Nowadays, we have blockchain based games. And uh, uh, not only that, the metaverse, it has changed the thing. So how these things they are going to be impacted is quite uh, uh, interesting to know. Let's see, means we have now effectively learned that these games are competitive interactions. They are bound by the rules to achieve specific goals that depend on skill. Sometimes they involve chance and they often occur in imaginary settings. And as a layman, when we talk about games, we usually treat it as playing uh, with something. However, the games when used in education, like as you see in this video, they are means quite bigger in scope than simply playing it. The fundamental motivation for all the game playing is to learn. And when we create games which are largely accessible, reasonably priced, engaging, joyful, entertaining, and effective substitutes for traditional classroom activities, 
in educational settings for all levels, date pre prime date up to university or professional level. It turns into fun and engaging uh, activity, which leads to the infusion of learning and uh, interactive environment. And uh, this is a, a real case of a recording uh, of a class in which the games they are means useful for teaching and learning. For example, we create uh, uh, various uh, uh, means opportunities. I'm going to uh, show it to uh, uh, very quickly then. Now, these games, they provide a more interactive environment to learners to interact with the content as compared to the books, audio and video. Therefore, interaction is most important feature in game-based learning. And besides interaction, uncertainty is also considered as one of the effective features in game-based learning from there. So, what is the various features which are very much essential for us to go with? Like adaptation, assessment, check to create challenge, conflict, the situation control, fantasy, interaction, language or communication, location, creating mystery based on rules or games, uh, uh, stimuli uh, the sensory thing, element of uncertainty, uh, representation or role play through there and th those things. And the important factor here is the authentic learning experience and which has been promoted by two, one of the most famous uh, educationists, John Davy, who was an American philosopher, psychologist and educational reformer and Brunner, Jerome Brunner there. They also, uh, you know, focused more on how we can provide authentic learning experiences. Authentic learning means which are related to the real life experiences. And these help in cognitive development. Like this is a uh, game which is called a Sim City, which is uh, very much, uh, uh, you know, a popular uh, uh, part there. So here the we ask the student that okay, create a city for you. In that, how you will take care of various decisions, and that leads to them. Uh, 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 these are my friends uh, uh, from. Uh, Sri Vaishnava Vidyapit Vishavidyalaya, Professor Bhar is the Vice Chancellor there, and uh, Dr. Bhumle and uh, Dr. Jigyasu. They conducted a study uh, on development of a player satisfaction scale. And they found that four more, uh, four factors they are the most important. The, uh, means the uh, pleasant uh, experiences, the excitement level, the team victory, and the learning experience. So when we think of designing it for teaching learning effective, how we can take these factors into consideration, that is a quite important uh, factor uh, from there. So there are various, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 motivations given by the government bodies. This is a project by Erasmus with the European Union Agency and ITC International where they have created, you see, a course on the game-based learning and gamification. Both these are, as Professor uh, Indu Kumar has rightly pointed out, that they are the uh, two different uh, phenomena, game-based learning and gamification. Here also, the purpose is how we can use them significantly to increase the quality of education and the effectiveness of education and to develop the critical thinking skills, the, the 21st century skills in our uh, uh, students uh, from there. So, what we is needed that the policy and the practices, they are very much important. Like Professor Zara was explaining that uh, it has a deep uh, in, uh, in significance highlighted into uh, national education policy. So, the, the how we can uh, 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 take care of, there are certain, these are the real uh, cases, like this UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. They have created this uh, uh, a, 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 a gaming application. It is named as Stop Disasters, and uh, they are uh, you know working in in such a way that uh, uh, using these through simulations, uh, we can teach our learners about the potential risks of disasters such as tsunamis, hurricanes, wildfires, earthquakes, floods. Or uh, we can disseminate knowledge on disaster prevention, 
monitoring, mitigation strategies, etc. And this is related to our uh, sustainable development goals also. Particularly, they focus on the society and environment. And not only that, it has a deeper relationship with uh, sustainable development goal 9, which relates to industry innovation and infrastructure, and 11, which focuses on sustainable cities and communities, and the sustainable development goal 13, which is pertaining to uh, climate action. There. Uh, in addition to that, there is another app. This is quite interesting thing. Any uh, inner cities. Uh, here, the learners are instructed to deploy measures for energy conservation. Yeah. <laughs> this past month, there is so much thought, and particularly in Delhi, uh, our uh, our electricity bill was 32,000, and we were highly surprised. How can it come? But nowadays, you know, the air conditioners they run full time. And we have received a notification from the electricity board that please check your electricity load. And in that case, these kind of things they are, uh, you know, they, they teach beautifully to our students the energy conservation, carbon reduction, fossil fuel reduction, etc. And not only that, at the same time, they must determine how to generate, uh, say, more electricity to pro promote uh, global economic development. And such games they endow learners with awareness of the necessary balance between energy, economy, and environment. Uh, let us see some of the uh, policy because this workshop is focused on policy practices and those issues. They have, various governments they have also taken uh, initiatives to promote uh, the, uh, the, uh, the game-based learning in their educational systems. Like uh, this is by Victoria State uh, um, in Australia, where they found and they involved various schools into it to see that how they can collaborate and the skills of problem solving, creativity, critical thinking, communication, digital literacy, etc. It can be you know integrated into the curriculum. So the curricular approach is how they can be promoted uh, through that. Uh, then this is an example from uh, England where through uh, ICT policies uh, and the uh, British uh, uh, Educational Visa uh, uh, Technology Agency, where they also, and various universities, they uh, undertook projects on how this, uh, in fact, this game-based learning is a part of this uh, uh, serious games in education, and this has been highlighted. So various projects, uh, they have been uh, are taken. Now, if we see uh, the uh, future of game-based learning in India, we find that, uh, and particularly when they, due to the uh, easy reach of uh, hardware, nowadays the prices are coming down, uh, related to virtual reality, mixed reality, extended reality, and those kind of things, this game-based learning is on the rise. Means there are various uh, education technology companies are coming up, uh, and uh, the, uh, the various institutions, they are fine-tuning, aligning their curriculum to, to integrate, to support these uh, factors into it. And there are, these are the various news clippings which are taken from the, uh, the uh, news media that uh, how these are being discussed and they are being uh, taken. So, uh, in uh, overall, in concluding, I can say that uh, this is a one of the fastest uh, uh, growing market on a global scale, uh, uh, everywhere we are uh, uh, focusing due to the inherent uh, benefits of it, uh, which uh, Professor Indu Kumar has already explained that uh, how we can make the teaching learning as a joyful activity, how we can integrate because here and then to provide the authentic learning settings to our uh, students. So this is how I view that the future of game-based learning in our country is very bright and we must uh, work toward that to achieve those things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It was a wonderful presentation and uh, especially the two names you showed, one was Sim City and the other was uh, Enner Cities. So that was really interesting and encouraging as well. A game which uh, makes you um, 
aware about energy and sustainability and what all can we do in our real lives uh, to you know save energy which is the future of uh, the world so okay um, thank you so much sir for being a part and it it was wonderful to have a conversation with you thank you so much so uh, let's come back to our program and uh, game based learning this is not the end of it let's ask indu ma'am that uh, this uh, game based learning or digital games uh, we are talking about ma'am why are they so important to you know incorporate or we should encourage them uh, sir gave us a few reasons yeah. and uh, showed certain examples he, as yeah, well he gave very good examples also where elements of games as well as uh, some curricular content yes. educational content, content was also there and it uh, says it all but there are a lot of other benefits of using uh, game or gamified games or gamified uh, learning in an educational uh, situation mm. so let us uh, look at the slide to sum up what are the uh, different benefits of game based learning so here uh, in this slide you can see uh, that uh, game based learning uh, the most of uh, the first and foremost they boost engagement when mm. uh, we all uh, loves to play mm. uh, be it in a physical environment or an, in a digital uh, environment so immersiveness is one of the very important element which game based learning or gamified learning provides and it boost engagement of learner with the learning situation or with the curricular contents then it also improve retention when we enjoy learning we are engaged better engaged with the learning that it improves our retention also we uh, have the content retained in our mind for a longer time and most of the time we retain it forever then creative ice breakers so these games provide creative ice breakers also to our learning uh, situation then uh, individualized feedback we get individualized feedback for our own learning we are improving uh, within ourselves we are sometimes we are in a com in an competitive situation with other but sometimes we are competing with ourselves also when we are uh, uh engaged with uh, uh, a game and it gives us individualized feedback for our own learning not comparing us with uh, others. others then it also encourages uh, collaboration collaboration with better collaboration with our teachers when we are in an online situation and with our uh, peers also in a classroom situation also when we are playing digital games so collaboratively also we can approach achieving a towards achieving a learning outcomes when we play in our teams when we play in groups then a motivation is another component important component to it so it motivates learner to move further in achieving more learning outcomes or next level of the same learning outcome then it also gives opportunity to a learner to a uh, for trial and error so he is not corrected by anybody else but he tries makes errors and then again tries to achieve a particular learning a goal or learning outcome it also uh, facilitates better problem solving critical uh, uh, thinking as uh, professor sharma already mentioned all these things that it leads to critical thinking also logical thinking and hence problem solving in a better uh, manner then it also um, make us make the learner practice a certain uh, curricular content again and again by uh, playing the game and when we are engaged in a practice uh, in achieving a learning outcome by practicing it also makes positive impact on our uh, uh, attention span we uh, achieve better attention span when we uh, play games because we tend to play and achieve the next level or we uh, uh, tend to achieve the learning outcome in uh, totality so that is how digital games aid to uh, the uh, uh, better teaching learning and hence 
uh, improving the overall quality of education in a better manner when uh, learners are motivated to learn and move further in their uh, learning. So that is uh, about the importance of adding game-based learning to an educational situation. Okay. So, uh, okay. over to Tanvi. <laughs> So, ma'am has given us so many reasons to incorporate uh, these digital games in our teaching learning process and uh, because we know that uh, everyone has the internet connection and uh, technology that is the key, that is the future. So, we have multiple reasons, be it, uh, be it achieving the better attention span, be it uh, better problem solving, motivation or even boosting the engagement. So thank you so much Indu ma'am and uh, thank you so much uh, Professor Sharma for being with us, for joining us in this program, for uh, letting our viewers so we know. have some questions, viewers uh, have posed some questions, we can take some questions um, otherwise. Ma'am we don't have much time left. Okay. <laughs> yes. Otherwise you have covered most of the things. <laughs> so um, here uh, we are not wrapping up our program here because uh, you can register for this training. This is a five day training and today is only the first day and the topic we have touched is game based learning perspectives policy perspectives need and scope tomorrow the topic of discussion would be use of digital games in teaching learning and assessment and every day there will be a new topic for discussion so 4 to 5 pm every day from monday to friday this uh, series will be there this training will be there so you can register yourself and on the fifth day that is uh, 24th of june friday there will be a quiz a quiz will be given to you a link will be given to you on our website and even it will be mailed to you so uh, you can apply for that quiz and if you uh, score 70 percent or above marks you will be given a certificate for that so let me tell you how you can register for this entire training and be a part of this training and participate and raise questions so all you have to do is on google type the website ciet.nic and uh, you will see the page here I am going to show you this page would be open. This is the home page and uh, you can see multiple options here. So among the events, uh, choose the third last option, uh, workshop slash training. Please click on it. If you will scroll it down, you can see among the current activities. 20th June to 24th June online training on game based learning. Please click here. So this is everything you need to know regarding this online training on game based learning. This is a five day program. The topics for each day uh, have been given here. This is the entire schedule. You can go through it. These are the objectives. You all can participate. If you are a teacher, student, teacher educator, parents, administrators, general public, everyone. And this is the schedule. It will be updated every day. And uh, this is the QR code. If you want to scan it and register yourself, please do that. Or you can also click here and be a part of this training. If you want to watch the live training sessions, this is the YouTube link given here. The channel is NCERT official and these are the channel numbers, TV channel numbers through which you can watch our programs. I would recommend please watch all the programs from Monday to Friday for better understanding of game based learning and here the quiz will be given to you. It will be opened on 24th of June and the closing date is 24th of July. So you will get approximately one month uh, to appear for this quiz and uh, like I said if you score 70% and above a certificate will be given to you for participation. And uh, the link will also be mailed to you if you don't receive it here it's written please check your spam mail if you don't get it in your inbox if you want to submit your feedback regarding this training regarding our webinar series then this is the link you'll click here and a form will be opened and uh, you can fill it up and it will reach us and we'll take action on that everything anything you want to know this is the email id training.helpdesk at the rate ciit.nic.in so this is our training program. Tomorrow we'll come back again and discuss the topic use of digital games in teaching, learning and assessment. 
here we are wrapping up this program now and uh, our next program is again a special program sayog guidance for mental well being of the children and the topic of discussion is role of self study in academic success which is very very important so stay here don't go anywhere keep on watching pme vidya channels and also our youtube channel which is ncert official thank you once again for watching this entire program it was lovely to have you uh, with us and uh, i hope you have got all the answers you were looking for so thank you and we'll meet tomorrow again thank you namaskar